harmonium. Namam hi swaran satchit anandarupam Latsat kundalam goku he rajamanam Satchit <laughs> Bharam Ritayan Tatyo Ritayatyo Gopya Bharam Bharam Adyam Antyam Tatyo Ritayatyo Gopya Jasaurami Aloka Dhavaham Haram Bharam Smitayan Tatyo Ritayatyo Gopya Param Ruram Tamu Hurne Trai Ruram Rijantam Param Vitam Yakarta Satakti Nacham Ruram Tamu Hurve Ruram Rijantam Param Boja Yugmena Satakti Muhu swasa kampati hai khanta khanta Sthitai ghavadhamo dharam bhakti bharam Dharam bhakti bharam Hirek swasali labya ananda kundhe Swago shami mayantam apaya yantam Tadiye sitai jay sur bhaktar jitar tam Bhuna premas tam satta ta vritti vande Puna prema tastam sata vritiva Bharam devam bhukshanam bhukshana vinva Nacham vindeham are sada piha Ram teva poor Gopala Bhaham Saram Heman Yasta Virastam Kiman Yai Saram Heman Yasta Viram Temu Kambojan Hanant and Hirai Vitam Kundal Lai Snegga Raktai Shagopya Mohoschum bidam bimba hakam derham he Manasta virastam adam laksha labhai Namo devo dhamo da ananda vishno 
ಭಸೀರ ಪ್ರಭೌ ದುಃಖ ಝಾಗ್ನಿಮಗ್ನ ಕೃಪಾ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ವೃಷ್ಟಿಯಾಥಿಥಿನು ಗೃಹಂದಿಶಂ ಅಂ ಅನ್ಯಂ ಅಕ್ಷ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಕೂಹ್ಯೋ ಬಾಂಧ ಮುಕ್ತಾಯ್ಭಾನ್ ಮೌಚಿಥೌ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಕ್ತೌ ಕೃಚೌ ಚೇಮ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವಕ್ಕ ಮೇ ಪ್ರಿಹಾಕ್ಷಾಮಕ್ಷಗ್ರಾಹೋ ಮೇಸ್ತಿ ಕಾಮೋಧರ ಧಾಮೋಧರಿಖಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾಯ್ಯಾ
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Tiger, <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, the tiger. Hey, Goranga, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hey, go, hey, hey, go, Ranga, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hey Krishna, 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 it's like Goranga, hey Goranga, hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Ha 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Whoa! Oh, glory is him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Ha 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 
Sí, sí, Raza, Ramuran, 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 He's so sorry. He's so sorry, child. He's so sorry. Hey, kiss. I'm so sorry. He's so sorry. He's so sorry, child. He's so sorry. And it I go, Hadi, Jai Prabhu Jai Prabhu And it I go, Hare To the Supreme Controller, whose essence is the eternal form of blissful knowledge, whose glistening earrings swing to and fro, who manifested himself in Goku, who stole the butter that the gopis kept hanging from the rafters of their storerooms, and then quickly jumped up and ran in retreat in front of Minnesota, but was ultimately caught to that Supreme Lord Sri Damodar. I offer my humble obeisances. Damodar, in your form as a baby, Mother Yashoda bound you to a grinding stone with rope for tying cows. You then freed the sons of Kuvira, Mani Griva, and Nala Kuvara, who were encouraged to stand as trees, and you gave them the chance to become your devotees. 
please bless me in the same way. I have no desire for liberation in view of the full truth. He asked me to do it yesterday, that's why I did it. I'm not going to do it today. Unless he asks me. <laughs> I was going to waste time, so. Past time, to be honest. Yeah. 
जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र महारानी की हरि नाम संकीर्तन की गौर प्रेम नंदी ग्लोरीज टू दी असेंबल डिवोटीज और ग्लोरीज टू दी असेंबल डिवोटीज और ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंग शील प्रभु पाद की जाए सो कंटिन्यूएशन विद आवर प्री श्रीमद् भागवतम क्लास डिस्कशन ऑन some tips on chanting the hari krishna maha mantra japa so we mentioned the importance of a few things some practical some devotional one was to what what was one of them let the ladies ladies this ladies is a very silent turn to moni babas over here <laughs> Very silent. Yes. Huh? Don't try to get the ecstasy. 
just chant to, to, to approach Krishna nicely. The ecstasy or the happiness that comes from chanting, which is the complete happiness, is come by way of Krishna's grace, when he wants to reveal himself. And so as soon as you come in contact with Krishna, you, you automatically become happy or ecstatic, joyful, free from anxiety. It's natural. It's not like he has to turn on the happiness valve and then you get happy. No, as soon as you come in contact with Krishna, you're happy. It's, so if you're not happy, you're not in contact with Krishna. <laughs> That's as simple as that. So we can, we want to come in contact with Krishna. It's, so this is the best way is to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. And as Krishna is pleased and satisfied with our approach to him and his holy name, He'll experience, we will experience his presence and that will cause us to be happy and ecstatic like that. Another feature, get the Veda base ready today too. I have another one that Gokulananda, you have your little Veda base today? Yeah. Turn to Chaitanya Charitamrita chapter 17. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, don't try to squeeze it in. Japa is not a race. Japa is not a beat the clock. <clears throat> you remember that TV show, Beat the Clock? <laughs> it goes way back. We're not trying to beat the clock. We're trying to beat our minds into submission into the holy name. So, therefore, it's not trying to squeeze your rounds in. And you'll find, and this is actually a fact, if you're chanting nicely, time will go faster than when you try to force the time element by trying to go fast automatically. You know why? Because concentration speeds up time, the uh, ability to, uh, the time goes fast. The more you're concentrated, the faster your rounds go. You may not see that, even if you th think you're chanting slowly, but if you're concentrated... Time goes fast. <laughs> you, know, you can chant rounds in six minutes, six and a half minutes, sometimes seven, if you're concentrated. <clears throat> if you're not concentrated and you're trying to go fast, your mind is just jumping like a what? monkey, frog. <laughs> Monkeys and frogs, and what else jump? Ladies? What else jumps? Hmm? Kangaroos. All right, we got one. <laughs> they jump so much the kid falls out of the pouch. Boom. <laughs> Where'd the kid go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's a very essential point because that's from Sanatana Goswami. He gives six principles on what we say, how to chant japa nicely and one of them is how's he say it don't try to finish just you know try to hear hmm. like that so that's a primary principle it's coming from Sanatana Goswami it's not some ISKCON idea <laughs> which a lot of them are but that one's not that, that's Sanatana Goswami so, anything else? What was another one we discussed? Jai Jagana? To uh, help to accent concentration, we try to hear the first Hare. <laughs> it's more like an entrance into the rest of the mantra. And it's the entrance of the hearing. So do that. Hare Krishna. Even if you have to emphasize that Hare like that. So it helps a lot. And it's also philosophically correct because we approach Krishna by approaching Krishna through Radharani. Like that. No, I'm not you should concentrate on, on the whole mantra, but to access increased concentration, this is a technique, that's all. It's not like you choose which which mantra, you, which part of the mantra you like. <laughs> it's not like it's not like that. 
No, the whole mantra, ultimately, but to help. It's, a, it's, it's an aid to, to accessing concentration by focusing on the first Hare. I also found out, for me, I, I discussed this with, with Sachi Nandana Maharaj, and I said, also on the first Rama, he basically said, no, just on the first Hare. But I find that when I also do the first Rama, it also helps too. But he disagreed with me on that one. But that's an individual thing. So basically you can decide how best to chant like that. Okay, what else did we... I think that was it, right? As far as the different techniques or ideas. Which one? Oh yeah, we did this one yesterday. This is what? What is it called? Mudra. It's a mudra. It's a mudra of concentration. Yogis use this. You see, yogis are like this. So you have to do something with this left hand. You know? Sometimes people just put it, you know, shove it behind the back so it doesn't get in the way, or put it on, you know, on the knee or on the head or something. Do something. So well, this is the best way. It's just like this one has got the beads. Srila Haridas Thakur, if you see uh, Murtis of him, he's holding his beads close to his heart. And, and then at the same time he's got, well, he has his hand on his leg like this. But this is also good. I can't see that far. <laughs> okay. So this helps. And when I told the devotees during the Japa Mela camp, um, some of them said, yeah, it, it kind of helps to some degree. It helps concentration. And okay, so these are the ones we discussed. I got one for you today. This one's important. And that is clear pronunciation of the name. This is really important. It's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari What is it not? <laughs> Boy, I'm really going today. I'm getting my rounds done. <laughs> yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> So, okay, Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter Adi Lila, chapter 17, verse 32. Um, this is Srila Prabhupada's purport on some technique for chanting. Someone can read, either one of you two can read, who has it first. <laughs> this is Krishna Das Kabirat speaking. That's Trinata Peace and Ichena verse. That's what he's referring to. Pur purport. That chanting involves the activities of the upper and lower lips as well as the tongue. All three must be engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The words Hare Krishna should be very distinctly pronounced and heard. Sometimes one mechanically produces a hissing sound <laughs> instead of chanting. <laughs> Instead of chanting with the proper pronunciation. It sounds like the radiators, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that you? No, I thought I thought we were getting some heat. <laughs> um, sometimes one mechanically produces a hissing sound instead of chanting with the proper pronunciation with the help of the lips and tongue. 
Chanting is very simple, but one must practice it seriously. Therefore, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, advises everyone to keep this verse always strong about his neck. Mm-hmm. So, Hare Krishna. I find clear pronunciation increases the ability to concentrate because you hear the sound clearer. Whereas if you're just pushing the sound, the letters together, and making the hissing sound or some other, what we say, signal to whatever demigod you're chanting to. <laughs> <It's using laughs> and then you can hear nicer. And that's the idea. When the sound is clear, the concentration becomes more accessible. I find that anyway. So it's not a matter of race. Yes, he wants you. They say what? Hare? Like hi? Like what? Hare. Hare. So what are your thoughts on that? Hare. It's Hare, Krishna. Sometimes we say Hare. Hare, but if the R is there, Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare you, Hare me. <laughs> what day is it? Hare. <laughs> it's today. <laughs> it's one devotee. I mean, this has happened a few times. Somebody got a tape recorder and put it next to devotees when they chant. And then played it back for them. That's me. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes we find that hmm, we think we're actually doing, but we have to practice. So, so really, the idea is, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada on his japa tape, he starts off very mechanically and very slow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like that. What is he doing? He's helping us to access the concentration. And then as the concentration increases, then the speed automatically increases. So don't, you know, try to catch that sound. The first mantra, or I'm, I'm sorry, the first, ja, the first round, in my own job, it takes me a long time because I really go slow on the first round until I can actually, my mind starts to realize what it's doing. <laughs> yes. Um, one question is when I, I find when I do that like very much focus on each word and concentration you can't do that through the whole time yeah, you, your it, mind will just space out it also space out too yeah and that was my, going to be my second question it allows room for yeah you have to see what works as far as concentration I mean, this is a general uh, feature where generally because we're not concentrated on this sound, we have to bring it into the sound. If you go fast, sometimes you think you're hearing, but you're not. You're just going fast. That's all. You're really missing a lot of the syllables. <laughs> so make sure you're hearing, and then the, the speed will automatically in, increase. But, but all, amongst all these different conti- techniques, there is the element of bhakti, which is prominent. Therefore... Japa really means to call out to Krishna for his mercy, to pray to Krishna to come and uh, sit on the holy name of my heart. Like that. It's a devotional aspect. These things help access the mood, but ultimately it's all devotional. <laughs> so I'm just giving some general ideas in your own experience, you can see how you can adjust things. And Krishna's in your heart; he'll show you if you're sincere. These are these are not absolute principles; these are just ideas or techniques. Yes, you had a question? No, okay. No, no, she didn't have one. 
Okay. So if you go too slow, it, one of the things, if you're tired and you really go slow, you can forget about it. <laughs> you know, it's like two, two hours later, I got three rounds done. <laughs> You can't fall asleep during japa. It's an offense, actually. And it causes one to, you know, be, what we say, inattentive in their service and in so many other things. So one has to stay awake during japa. It's important. Bhaktivinoda Thakur talks about this as being a form of inattention sleep. And he gives three forms of inattention. Other thoughts, lack of enthusiasm, and sleep. These are the three forms of inattention. So if we're tired, we can do a few things to stay awake, but if you're too tired, as Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, take rest and then chant later when you're more rested, if you're, if you're just too tired. But generally, try to stay awake. Maybe a little walking around, a little water on the eyeballs, like that. <laughs> Put some water on, on the eyeballs, not on the eyes. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> That's an old trick for staying awake for driving. You put the water on the eyes. It keeps you awake when you're driving. Okay, so the holy name. Any more comments, questions? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 4, Chapter 31, Chapters entitled Narada Instructs the Prachetas, Text Number 5. Pracheta Uchu Swagatam Te Sarasedhya Dhrishyano Darshanam Gataha Tavat Chankran Manham Brahman Abhaya ya yata ravehe Pracheta prachetas prachetasa uchu Swagatam te sarase dhyaha Dishyano darshanam gataha Tava chankra manham brahman Abhayaya yata ravahe Prachetasa uchu Swagatam te sarase dhyaha Drishyano darshanam gataha Tava chankram manam brahman Abhayaya yata ravahe Ladies,
Prachetasa Uchu. The Prachetas said, Su Agatam, welcome. Te, unto you. Suras Rishe, O sage among the demigods. Adya, today. Drishtya, by good fortune. Na, of us. Darshanam, audience. Kataha, you have come. Tava, your Chankramanam, movements. Brahman, O great Brahmana. Abhayaya, for fearlessness. Yata, as Ravahe of the sun. Translation. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All the Prachetas began to address the great sage Narada. O great sage, O Brahmana, we hope you meet with no disturbances while we hope you met with no disturbances while coming here. It is due to our great fortune that we are now able to see you. By the traveling of the sun, people are relieved from the fear of the darkness of the night, a fear brought about by thieves and rogues. Similarly, your traveling is just like the sun, for you drive away all kinds of fear. Purport. Because of the night's darkness, everyone is afraid of rogues and thieves, especially in great cities. People are often afraid to go out on the streets, and we understand that even in a great city like New York, People do not like to go out at night. More or less, when it is night, everyone is afraid, either in the city or in the village. However, as soon as the sun rises, everyone is relieved. Similarly, this material world is dark by nature. Everyone is afraid of danger at every moment, but when one sees a devotee like Narda, all fear is relieved. Just as the sun disperses darkness, the appearance of a great sage like Narda Dissipates, disperses, disperses darkness. When one meets Narda or his representative, a spiritual master, one is free from all anxiety brought about by ignorance. Om Ajnantimirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam dadati swam padanti kam. Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Siya Dvaita Gadar Har Sivasari Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm, Fear hmm. So this material world is characterized by fear says, from the highest living being in the material existence, Lord Indra, down to the injured gopa germ, which is considered the smallest of all living entities, everyone is, has the element of fear. Fear, what is fear? Fear, Prabhupada says, means two. The number two, two, two. To see something outside of Krishna, that means one becomes fearful. So one who sees Krishna and everything and everything in Krishna can be relieved from the element of fear. But fear is very difficult. It's easier to get over lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride. But fear is a difficult one because fear is there with everyone. And what is the ultimate fear? That's mentioned death. <laughs> everyone is afraid of losing this material body because they live for the body and when they die, when the body goes, they feel like it's the end of everything. So, this fear is, char is characterized by this material existence. So, there is a thing called abayam. Abayam, abayam. abayam means fear, abayam means without fear, fearlessness. So, Srila Prabhupada's name was A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. A.C. means abai charanadavindam, one who fearlessly takes shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. So one who takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord or one's, the Lord's pure representative can be freed from the element of fear. As is mentioned here, using the example of Narada Muni, who has come into the life of the Prachetas, 
They're so happy to see them. They say, Swagatam. <laughs> Sometimes we say, Su Swagatam, right? That means very much welcome. And we offer Lord Jagannath these terms, Su Swagatam. Or Swagatam means welcome. They're happy to see him. And they're also asking how is his welfare. But they, have, they understand that he's come to dissipate ignorance. Darkness, fearlessness is signified by ignorance. Ignorance is what? Ignorance is that principle where one sees duality or one lives within the realm of duality. We can't get away from duality because duality is the material nature. There, whatever you see one side, you see the other. There's always dual. This is the nature of duality. Where there's heat, there's cold. Where there's honor, there's dishonor. Where there's happiness, there's distress. So an item is known by its, where there's life, without, life means without death. And when there's death, there's no life. <laughs> so these things characterize the material energy. How to get free from these things? Here it says the presence of the Lord's pure representative. Automatically, the example is giving that just like at the night, sometimes I know, like when you're a little kid, or even now, if somebody shuts the ha lights off or you go into a dark room in your house, you know there's nobody there, but still, ooh, can't wait to get to the light switch. <laughs> it's like, you know there's nobody there, but still the darkness has a certain element about it where you feel some, some anxiety, maybe small. If you go into a place you don't know and it's dark, then it, ooh, what else is in there, you know? Spiders and cockroaches and so many other evil things, you know. Some man is just waiting for you to come and grab you. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the material world. And we get what we say afflicted by this consciousness due to, you know, the attachment of the material body. Due to the attachment of the material body... We are seeing the material world in one way, and that is to try to avoid the difficulties and try to go for the, the gusto or the happiness in this material world. But fear, fear is always there. The idea is to get mitigated, to be completely fearless. That's Krishna consciousness. Uh, when Srila Prabhupada was asked, how, how do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna? He says, fearless. <laughs> So that means when one is associating with Krishna, there's no question of fear anymore. Or when the presence of the Lord's per, pure devotee enters into our life, either personally or by their instructions. Here it's talking about personally, because the personal presence dissipates all the anxieties in our mind and makes us peaceful. And we feel now we can connect with God through his representative. And as it says that the pure devotee carries the Lord within their heart. So wherever they go, they're like a place of pilgrimage. And uh, Maitreya Muni was glorifying, who was it? Uh, what's that sage? Huh? Vidura was glorifying Maitreya Muni. Yeah, I'm sorry. He was, Vidura was saying, he was glorifying that, you know, you are... Sages like you are a virtual place of pilgrimage. Why? Because you carry the Supreme Lord within your heart. That's why great souls are very special. Because their association is the association with Krishna. Practically, directly. So they're given all honor and all respect here. And what do they do? They dissipate the darkness of ignorance. How do they do that? By giving us assurance. Just take shelter of Krishna. Just take shelter of devotional service. Just chant the holy names of the Lord, and you'll be happy. You'll be free from anxiety. Be free from fear. You'll be free from the bodily concept of life. So they give assurance. That's an important word. Assurance means some, let me say, positive feeling of success. That if I simply do this, then I can achieve what we say the goal of life. I can be happy. Ultimately, I can be happy and free from anxiety. Wherever there is anxiety and fear, happiness is non-existent. So in order to access that happiness, we have to uh, have, uh, dissipate these forms of ignorance. So the spiritual master, the pure devotee of the Lord, he comes 
on behalf of the Lord to destroy the, the darkness of ignorance in the hearts of all living entities. And that's his service. Simply by his presence, by his words, or by service to him, all these things can eliminate the anxiety and fear in our hearts. And that's why they say that more glorious or more beneficial or most beneficial is not the association of God, but the association of God's pure devotee. Because to get the association of God is very difficult. But to get the association of the Lord's devotee means to get the association of God. That's why the great devotees are seen as good as God. Yasya prashada bhagavat prashado yasya prashadan naguti kutopi. By the grace of the spiritual master, one gets the mercy of the Lord. Without the mercy of the spiritual master, and naguti kutopi, it's it's useless. It's from evahi kevalam. <clears throat> so we 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 strive for and we focus our consciousness on getting the association and getting the mercy of the great souls. That is the key to devotional service. <clears throat> so, therefore, one has to take shelter. And there's two ways, personal association and instructions. Personal association opens up the door to the instructions, but the instructions are ultimately association. Because when the associate, personal association is not there, our connection is through the instructions. The instructions keep us connected to Krishna and through the process of devotional service. So <clears throat> how important it is to take shelter of the bona fide spiritual master or the pure devotees of the Lord. And they travel. They go from town to town, country to country, village to village, as Prabhupada said, simply to do one thing, to bring Krishna into the life of others. That's their only business. They have no business other than that. <clears throat> if one has another business other than that, then they can't be classified as Krishna's pure representative. <clears throat> so that's the main thing, <clears throat> is to take shelter. And when you're free from fear, you're happy. What is fear caused by? Sometimes people are so fearful. I was just, um, I don't know how I came across this, but there's a website <laughs> on the internet where it has a whole listing of phobias. Have you seen that? And in other words, phobias are, phobia means fear, right? Yeah. There, are fee, there are people who are fear of flutes. Flute phobia. <laughs> Imagine if, that means they have a problem with Krishna because <laughs> he's, he's always playing his flute. <laughs> there are people who are afraid of chimes. You know, these chimes, they have a fear. When they hear it, they just, I know one girl, she was telling me, I'm afraid of frogs. <clears throat> I can't stand frogs. Just to think about frogs, ah, it's horrible. I know when I was growing up, I was always afraid of spiders, you know. I guess that's quite common for little kids. Even when you grow up, sometimes, you know, you still have that fear of spiders. The spiders are just, yeah, it's low class. <laughs> They they haven't they don't have any sukriti at all. <laughs> so you know, so you know, there's fear of so many things, right? This this website had listed more than a hundred different types of phobias, right? So these are all due to contact with the material energy in an awkward way. <clears throat> so how do you get over fear? Is take shelter of devotional service, but fear is what we say fortified by absorption in the temporary. This is what Prabhupada explains. The more you're absorbed in the material life, the more fearful you will be. And, you know, you see sometimes rich people, what do they have? They have dogs, guards, bars, you know, so many things around their houses. I think one of the biggest businesses is a security business, right? You know, Locks, keys, guns, right? <laughs> People are afraid of everything. Sometimes they're afraid of their 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 family members too. So it fear is such a a powerful element and it pervades people's consciousness. On the external level, as far as losing something that I have, 
or on the internal level, losing, you know, my health or my life or whatever. But a devotee is fearless. A devotee is not foolish. Foolish means carefree, not being cautious. That's another type of foolishness. It's not fearlessness. Sometimes you see people, we call the word flippant. They just act whimsically whenever they want to act whimsically. And they think, oh, I'm fearless because you know, I just do whatever I want, whenever I want. But that's another form of foolishness. They get trapped by the material energy too and act in the wrong way and get caught. But a devotee has one kind of fear, and Prabhupada talks about it. It's called the healthy fear. What is that healthy fear? Afraid of falling into maya. One should cultivate this fear. This fear of again being pulled in by the material energy and again being what we say under the influence of the modes, especially passion and ignorance. So that fear is healthy, which keeps one aware of how important it is that devotional service should be executed at every moment. In other words, being careful not to make a mistake, to say the wrong thing, to do the wrong thing, to act in the wrong way at the wrong time. So the devotee can easily get caught by material energy if they're not careful. Prabhupada says, Krishna's here, Maya's here. What is that verse? Krishna bulia, boja kare, japati, japati adare. Prabhupada quotes that often. Krishna's here, Maya's here. You move this way, you got Maya. You move this way, you got Maya. You move this way, you got Maya. In other words, to stay, keep your consciousness on Krishna means to fine-tune your life in such a way that you're thinking and doing things in relationship to Krishna at every moment, whether chanting, serving, reading, praying, or just thinking about Krishna like that. Otherwise, if a consciousness deviates, <clears throat> you can expect that any moment something could happen, and again, you could be victimized by Maya. <clears throat> what is that victimization? You start looking towards Maya for happiness or sense gratification. Someone has to be very careful in the execution of one's devotional service. Careful means conscious. Prabhupada says conscious and cautious. <laughs> conscious of Krishna, cautious of Maya, like that. What is Maya? That which drags our, our mind and intelligence away from devotional service, like that. So that's where the devotee can cultivate real fear. I'm afraid of going into Maya. <laughs> so therefore, Prabhupada gives us a blue pattern, a blueprint on how to act and think and everything. If you're in your home with your family, what do you think? Well, I got family responsibilities. But who are your family members? They're part and parcel of Krishna. So you have some responsibility to serve them and take care of your needs in the family, but do it as a service to Krishna and offer the results to Krishna. I take care of my child because my child is not, it's my child, but at the same time, it's been given to me by Krishna so I can take that child and grow, teach them Krishna consciousness like that. Now my mother is there. Who is my mother? She's the person who has brought me into the world and given me this body. But she hasn't given me life. She's given me this body. My real life is coming from Krishna because I'm part and parcel of Krishna. So I respect my mother. I honor my mother. I worship and serve my mother. But as a duty uh, in relationship to that role as mother and son or, or daughter. So we can use, even in, even in a workplace... I think last Christmas we had this devotee from Alachua, Ramania, Ramania, I think it was named. He gave a whole seminar. I remember I was sitting here, he was over there, he was talking about how to become Krishna conscious at your work. And he had been in a workplace for 28 years as a devotee. And he had somewhere, took, in, took some notes and used his intelligence how to become somewhat free from the environment that he's in. And uh, I still have that. I actually, he sent that to me. I put it on my computer. And sometimes people ask me, 
you know, how can, you know, I got a job and I got to go to work and I, people around me are not so nice sometimes. Well, what do I do? So there's certain techniques, which is the basis of our philosophy that can be applied even in those things. So, therefore, a devotee is always thinking, no, I got to somehow or other avoid maya. Where does maya start? Maya starts in the mind. The mind starts bringing out thoughts that are contrary to our devotional service or just useless. <laughs> totally useless, have no value at all. And just the whims of the mind. Most like, you know, the leaves, they blow in the wind. And you see a red leaf, a blue, a, a brown leaf, <laughs> a green leaf. And it's just the wind blowing. So the winds of the mind just blowing up the thoughts that are there in the unconscious and in the conscious. And what do you get? You're in, you're in a whirlwind. <laughs> it's not so safe because there's no stability in a whirlwind. And sex, when the sex desire is, is, is like, yeah, what's it say in the Bhagavatam? That the desire for sex is like being caught in a whirlwind. <laughs> because it's like you become blinded by the, the dust that the whirlwind kicks up and it gets in your eyes and you can't see anything. So sex desire is like having dust in your eyeballs. <laughs> it's not very nice. So, therefore, you can't see. You can't see Krishna, you can't see anything else. All you can see is how to satisfy that in your senses. So, therefore, one has to apply. You all look quite scared. I'm, I'm like, like I'm, this class is, is it really making you that scared? No. Okay. You can relax a little bit. I'll tell a joke if it gets too heavy. <laughs> but these are, these are important principles to understand in order to deal with the material energy because we have to. We're involved with this material energy. So the essence of Krishna consciousness is, you know, satatam kirtayam tamam. Always remember Krishna. Always think of Krishna. And wherever you are, if you think of Krishna, you're, with, you're free from the effects of the material energy. Okay, so darkness, ignorance, fear, all things that drag us down and cause us unnecessary trouble. Take shelter of the light. What is the light? This is the light. This is a bright light. The knowledge in Bhagavatam gives us the direction how to get out of this darkness of ignorance and how to see clearly three things. You, yourself, Krishna, and your relationship with Krishna. <laughs> okay, any questions? Anyone? Sorry for the fast class, but I wanted to get everything in. <laughs> In my practical experience, um, I have a certain solidarity in my practice of Krishna consciousness in terms of chanting. You know, solidarity? Know, yeah, a certain solidarity, not like totally solid. But you mean uh, routine, you mean? Yeah, like routine. Yeah, you know, okay. I, I, when I, I chant in the morning, I don't take rest. I mean, I don't sleep while I'm chanting. And I, you know, I like to read box on for many hours and so on. But I, f I still see my consciousness a strong attachment for sensual enjoyment. And, it gets, and I, I get afraid that even if I was able to maintain throughout my entire life some form of practice, consciousness, but I see my consciousness is still very much attached to sensual enjoyment. I get afraid that, you know, is it, this is going to be like... Do you actually like, believe your consciousness? Huh? Do you believe it? Do I believe my consciousness? Do you, do you actually, are you actually attached or is it just that the mind goes in that direction? The mind goes in that direction. Um, That's different. As long as you're in this material world, you can expect that the mind will be deviated by the environment. Therefore, Krishna says, wherever and wherever the mind wanders, bring it back under the control of the self. The question is, do you really, if you want material happiness or material enjoyment, then that's a problem. These things are residues from our past association with the material energy, and they're rekindled by the present environment and by our association also. <clears throat> Just like if you eat food cooked by non-devotees, 
you can expect, you know, you might be watching, you know, cartoons in your dreams or something. <laughs> it was one, de one devotee who was a very senior devotee. He had one of his disciples cook for him. And then he said to her after, are you listening to Beatles music? She said, how did you know, Maharaj? <laughs> He said, I just had some of your cooking. <laughs> so, you know, the consciousness of the cook comes into our consciousness of the food. And then we're, you know, we're, you're, we're in, you know, some movie theater. <laughs> Sometimes it's a horror movie, too. So, so, therefore, we have to be careful not to become victimized by what we say the environment or by the association and that'll take time if you're a preacher you should know that you're gonna you're gonna have to really fight as a preacher you're in contact with people who are impure and are also gonna dump their garbage on you <laughs> when you hear people's problems it, that goes into your consciousness also and learning how to preach means to detach yourself from people's experience. You have to be like a doctor who's well and is trying to treat a tra patient who is sick. Don't let the, 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 the uh, patient give you the disease, even though they want to give it to you. <laughs> Preaching means to somehow or other not be affected by the, the negativity you have to deal with. So sometimes that comes. It comes to the preachers a lot. That's why they become affected. Sometimes they empathize too much. They put, say, I have to put myself in the place of this person so I can help them. No, if you do that, you go down also. You have to somehow or other be detached from the situation and then treat it like a patient, a doctor treats a patient, that's all. By giving the medicine and not being victimized by the disease of the patient. So that's, you know, sometimes your mind will, because of that, because of, as a preacher, you'll find that that is there. <laughs> you get that. <clears throat> so you have to be careful. You should know when you're preaching, it's not like it's so nice. It's nice, but you also, you can pick up the energy that's around you easy, you know. Very easy. That's why, as a preacher, you need to take a break and go on a japa retreat <laughs> Go on a reading retreat, just do a retreat, and just when we say go back and emphasize pure Krishna consciousness, get fired up, get restocked up again. To stay on the preaching field, we can't be like Prabhupada. Prabhupada was just too pure for us. To try to imitate Prabhupada, you'll fall down. Easy. So we need to also, you know, stock up on Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitam Rita, and the Holy Name in order to deal with that. So, yeah, the mind may also gravitate towards these things just by the association around you or by the environment. But then again, you also have to ask, do I still look, do I still look towards the material energy for some happiness? If you're still looking toward that, then these thoughts will still they'll come, they'll come regularly. But if you don't want them, you're not interested in material energy anymore, you understand that material happiness is, is just a, what we say in, uh, 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 what is the word? Oxymoron. <laughs> There's no such thing as a material, material happiness. When you realize that through your own power of devotional service, then you still may be, you know, subjected to these thoughts, but it's not like, you know, one who is actually looking for these things. You just have, when you do, you just have to kind of like be ready for that. <laughs> just like Prabhupada said, he said, sometimes the spiritual master has bad dreams due to picking up the karma of his disciples. So please follow the four regulative principles and don't give your spiritual master any trouble. <laughs> so... Okay, does that help answer your question? Okay, that was a pretty long answer, but I hope it helped. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much. 
Um, so, in the last sentence of the purport, Ma, uh, Prabhupada writes, when one meets Narada or his representative, a spiritual master, he is freed from all anxiety brought about by ignorance. Mm -hmm. So it's very straightforward um, right. declaration. So I wonder if you could possibly please expand a little bit what exactly goes on um, on the, the part of the disciple in order for that to um, One has to open themselves up to the presence of the, the pure devotee. Mm, this, there's another example, being in the presence of a great soul, but not really being in their presence. In other words, Prabhupada used an example. A flea is on top of a king, but what, is, what does the king and the flea have to do with each other? Although the flea's right next to the king. So to be with a saintly person means to welcome them, to hear from them, and to serve them. Three things. To welcome them, what did the Prachetas do? They welcome them. Now they're, really, now they're ready to hear from them. And then later they'll also offer service to them. Like that. Because you, when you hear from a saintly person, you're also obliged to offer some service. Or at least try to come forward and offer something. Like that. In one form or another. A saintly person might just say, just serve Krishna, you know, like that. That's fine. But those three things, to hear, to welcome, to honor, to use welcoming well words or sweet words, to hear, that's the main thing, to hear from them, and to think, what can I do to serve? Right, three things. And then you're in the association. <laughs> At least here and be pleased by their presence. <laughs> Consider yourself fortunate to get that. Sometimes devotees say, you know, I don't get much association with, you know, senior devotees because maybe because of my location or whatever, but I, then I say, well, you have to and then you have to seek it out. And then you have to make some endeavor to find it. You have to go for it. Yes. This is a question, kind of follow up from yesterday's discussion, if that's all right. Yes, yeah, sure. The, you were discussing humility as like the ornament of all ornaments of a devotee. Yeah. And we were discussing how can we, uh, what does humility really mean? Because we often have this materialistic. Oh, uh, who's got their database? Okay. <laughs> We'll hear it from Prabhupada. Uh, chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita. You know the verse, right? 8 through 10, 8 through 12, 13, 8 through 12. Okay. So, and then go, you have to scroll down the page a little bit to get to humility. Yeah. Where's the microphone? <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, okay, it says here, uh, poor, poor. As for the knowledge outlined here, the items may be analyzed as follows. Humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. The, the material conception of life makes us very eager to receive honor from others, but from the point of view of a man in perfect knowledge who knows that he is not this body, Anything, honor or dishonor, pertaining to his body is useless. One should not be hankering after the material deception. That's yeah, sure. yeah, that's complete. Not wanting the distinction to be honored by others. Amaninam, amanadena. To not to want to be honored, but at the same time, give honor. And that's That's one of the... Um, principles or what we say quali qualities that are necessary in order to chant the holy name properly <clears throat> if you want respect and honor when you get it you're happy when you don't get it you're not happy <laughs> 
It's a form of expectation also. And it's false too, because honor is, pertains to the body. Like that. So, like that. Honor and dishonor, what do they say? Honor and praise and blame is only, praise and blame is just the same, only difference in name. And man, that's a shame. <laughs> that's why I add that one on. <laughs> Little poetry here. <laughs> To look for praise, <laughs> to look for praise, you know. Okay, somebody praises you. Oh, you feel, oh, yes, they finally understood. <laughs> yeah, you know, and somebody doesn't praise you. <sighs> What's wrong with you? Don't you know that other person? He, he, he knows really me. You don't know me. <laughs> if, you, if you are looking for praise, you'll get blame also. You get both, but you can't have one without the other, and therefore you won't be happy. It's artificial. It's external. It has nothing to do with, you know. It, it actually causes. It can cause one to fall down also. And devotees sometimes we praise each other and we honor each other. That's also vo devotional culture. But when you get praised, you should just pass it on. You should say thank you very much, but it actually it belongs to my spiritual master. It's actually the mercy of the Lord. Like that. So we just pass it on. If you don't pass it on, you keep it, then the false ego gets stronger. So people will praise you, people will criticize you. You know, Judd Bart. He was completely oblivious to that. <laughs> no matter what people said, he didn't care. But yet, he, uh, he was the greatest scholar. He could recite, you know, spiritual knowledge verbatim. He understood everything. It wasn't like he was oblivious. But when it came to praise and blaming, and you can see that sometimes people praise you and that same person will find fault with you later on. <laughs> It's just like that, right? Because when you live up to their expectations, they like it. And when they don't, <laughs> then you're out, man. <laughs> hey, what happened to you? You didn't satisfy my senses anymore. So it's a really a dangerous position. It's a really a dangerous position. So sometimes you get upset if somebody criticizes you or says something negative. But learn how to see. It's just, it's just has to do with the material body, that's all. Even if you get upset, okay, but just let it slide. Don't let it bother you so much. Hmm. We'll be affected to some degree, but... Not so much. Just like if I say, you're ugly. Well, that may be true, but it's my body that's ugly, not me. <laughs> so I'm not the body. <laughs> right? right? It's the body. So you're praising and blaming what? The body. And the body is not me anyway. <laughs> but you think it's you. <laughs> um... Or you think, well, I'm giving respect to others. Why don't people respect me? I'm a nice person. I give respects to others. But Lord Chaitanya says if you know, he says you, can, you should respect others, but don't expect respect for yourself. If you get it, okay, thank you, pass it on. But don't look for it. That's the idea. That's the point. To want respect, to want honor. Like that, so one who's humble, really humble, they're not looking for it, and if they get it, they just pass it on. That's that's what humility means. They don't need it. They're they're 
they're engaged nicely in devotional service and they're finding happiness there, not on not on the praise that they get or don't get. Okay, is that what that's humility? Humility is humility means no expectations. Sometimes a guru has to train his disciple and he, he puts himself in a position of appearing to have expectations, but it's not. He's just doing that to train his disciple, to teach him how to serve the spiritual master. The temple president may also do that, demand certain things in order because it's the best thing for the operation of the temple and the best thing for the devotee. So one who's acting on behalf of Krishna may seem to be pretentious or proud, but actually they're not. But when you act on behalf of yourself, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. <clears throat> okay, does that help? Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.